Good morning and welcome to the podcast. I'm on a walk today, starting near to the Crooked Billet pub in North Yorkshire. It's about five miles from Garforth, about six miles from Tadcaster, and it's at the side of the road that runs between those two places. I'm doing something a little bit different today, going on a walk I've never been on before. I'm heading up to the area of Towton Battlefield. There's, I believe, a walk that goes around the main areas of interest. So I've set off from the pub, there's a track that runs to the right of it uphill, and I've now reached the high ground, walking with a hedge on my right. The weather today is quite nice, it's about 7 degrees, very little wind, no rain forecast, no sun forecast either, it's fairly cloudy, but it's quite a pleasant day for walking. And the skylarks that you hear often in the warmer months in this area are already busy high in the sky, singing their little hearts out. It'll be a little while before I reach the battlefield area, probably about three or four miles. I'm heading towards the village of Saxton, uh, and as I pass through that, the whole of the battlefield area is at the, the other side. The Battle of Towton took place on the 29th of March 1461, Palm Sunday, during the War of the Roses. It has the dubious distinction that it was probably the largest and bloodiest battle on English soil. It lasted for ten hours and there have been some disputes in recent years as to how many people were involved. But some estimates say as many as 50,000 people fought and possibly tens of thousands were killed. The Yorkist army achieved a decisive victory over the Lancastrian opponents and as a result of this Edward IV succeeded to the English throne and the Lancastrian king Henry VI was deposed. The path through the fields eventually gives way to a a, a road that if I turn right would take me towards Lotherton Hall. Turning left takes me down into the village of Saxton probably the highest ground around for a little while just looked on the map it tells me 55 meters above sea level and you do get good views uh, all around to the south just dipping out of view now behind the hill was all saints church at sherbin and Elmet, about the same height as as i am now it's set on a hill most of that large village is is much lower like a lot of churches in this country, it's a very ancient church and the village has been there since Roman times I think. certainly would have been a, 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 an active settlement when the, when the battle took place and I'm sure a lot of the soldiers on the way from the south would have passed through as, as they crossed the river at Ferry Bridge and headed north. I just see a skylark in the field to my right just just rising. One of my joys of being out in spring and summer is watching them head up and higher and higher till you lose sight of them and and then they just plummet back to earth. There's also a small airfield at Sherbrooke Helmet so it's quite possible that we'll be buzzed by a light aircraft on and off today. Going north along the walls, that are maybe about 20 miles away, 25 miles away, uh, eventually you can come to the Hambleton Hills, I think I can see. Beyond that, the Cleveland Hills. Two long lines of hills in either direction, you can't see the Pennines from here, but in some places you can see the hills to the east and the hills to the west when you're walking in this area. The name Saxton uh, is first recorded in the Doomsday Book in 1086, believed to be derived from the Old English, meaning, unsurprisingly, settlement of the Saxons. The village church shares the same name as its neighbour in Sherburn. It's called All Saints and dates from the 11th century, which I think is the same as the one in Sherburn. 
A number of the dead from the Battle of Towton were buried in its churchyard, as were men of the local area who died in World War One. It's a small village, population something just over 200, and a game would have been so close to the scene of the battle on that cold morning. The whole village sits in a a hollow, really, in this area of high ground. And from this angle you can see straight over the top of the village to the battlefield at the other side. There's a path to my left now that takes me to another road, down past the church, and then out towards Towton. On the left now is a path that goes through the fields and actually down to the crooked billet. And on the right, again through the fields to the to the village, which is basically houses and farms along the road. Just past the sports club, I think it's cricket. And now passing the back of the primary school, that's linked with the church. I think we're roughly halfway here between Leeds and York, around about 12 miles in each direction. Entering the village, I pass the church and come to a staggered crossroads. There are about five roads leading into Saxton and they all meet at this location. There's a road to Scarthingwell, which is three quarters of a mile. But the road I wanted is signposted Towton in one and three quarters and Tadcaster in about four. And I've left the village and I'm gradually climbing uphill to the large area of high ground where the battle took place, where those two armies met. I was walking yesterday with some friends and we were talking about feeling the past resonating through time and whether there was any feeling of it still now and my walking companions were of the opinion although they weren't sure what that there possibly is something spiritual about places where thousands of people have gone before and thousands of people have died violent deaths I try when I'm out walking to feel that but so far it has evaded me I know these things happened and here it's evidenced quite graphically by mass graves being uncovered all this time after and the skeletons when they've been examined have got horrific cutting and blunt force injuries. But on a day like today it's hard to imagine that that ever happened. There are two excellent videos on YouTube that I watched the other night that gave me the idea for the walk really. One is about the battle itself and very informative and the other one was about the the bodies that have been recovered in recent years. Both well worth watching and well worth checking out is the Towton Battlefield Society website and they do hold regular guided walks across the battlefield. In particular they hold one on Palm Sunday each year. As you walk along the lane out of the village, the area on the right, the large field, gently rising land, is marked on the map as the site of the battle. There's a track going up to a a solitary tree and a trig point that's marked on the map at 51 metres. And again, as on the hill approaching the village, there are views all round. But from here, the views east are are very clear. uh, And... The hill drops quite sharply down to the main road that runs from Ferrybridge to Tadcaster and I think this has been a a north-south route since Roman times and and certainly is the way to York and it would be the way that at least some of the armies would have come. At the other side of the battlefield is the, the road that goes from Towton to Wakefield which would be another route in and I've wanted to visit here for a a long long time and it actually to my non-historian mind seems to make a lot of sense now you can see full 360 degrees should anybody approach and this area at the top of the hill is fairly level and it was this time of year and today is quite pleasant really but with a howling wind and snow 
it would be a dreadful place to be for 10 hours, let alone fighting a battle. In the distance now I can see the All Saints Church at, at Sherburn and beyond that the Lays the Air Valley. Behind me looking northwest really is the site of battle and, and then beyond there Lays York. I can see one of the breweries at, at Tadcaster just peeping up over the trees. A very poignant place to be. And really hard to imagine whether it was 50,000, 20,000 or 100,000 people all facing each other with axes, clubs and swords. Across the field, about a mile or so, I can see the, the old cross at the side of the road where people park uh, to follow the, uh, the battle trail that's been established in the last few years. I can't go that way because I'd be trespassing, so I'll backtrack to the road and to the end of the lane and then turn right and walk along the side of that road to... Uh, to the start of that trail. This is a today a lonely spot I suppose. There's the trig point, there's the tree, a hedge leading back down to the lane. A peaceful spot. I was just about to leave the hill and head back to the lane and I took one last look at the solitary tree and the trig point situated as it is at the edge of the hedge looking out across the walls and the Hambleton Hills and I, with the aid of my binoculars I saw three little points sticking up on the horizon sure enough it's York Minster 12-14 miles away the great towers of the Minster are just peeping up over the horizon so the battle was actually fought within the within the site of York and as I was talking about the the cross at the other side of the field that's at the side of the road that I believe marks the site of the battle beyond that is a, an area called the Bloody Meadow and I think it was into that area where the Cockbeck, a small river is at the bottom and it was in that area that the defeated soldiers fled uh, and I think were massacred in, in, in large numbers. But for now I'll head back and round to pick up the, the trail a little further on. Saxton is about a quarter of a mile across the field, across a gently sloping field in its hollow that I described earlier. And where I'm standing I'm in full view of all the houses there. So people who lived there literally would have had a front row seat and I've no doubt would have heard the horrible sounds of, of, of the battle. In fact, one of my companions yesterday said he'd read an account where people could hear the battle at Hazelwood Castle, a stately home, which is maybe a good couple of miles from here. The sun's just breaking through the cloud in places, little glimpses of blue sky. I'm not a huge fan of walking on busy main roads and from the end of the lane that comes from Saxton there is a short stretch of maybe a quarter of a mile at the side of this road. But then there's a, an actual path at the other side of the hedge that seems to have been made by the, the Battlefield Society. Just a little way in from the road is an information board. Medieval armies were arranged in three battles, Van, Rearwood and Mainwood. The Lancastrians deployed facing south, commanded by Henry Beaufort, Duke of Somerset, Henry Holland, Duke of Exeter and Henry Percy, Earl of Northumberland. A contemporary source says they had 50,000 men against 48,000. 
660 Yorkist opponents. The Yorkist battles were led by King Edward, Sir John Wenlock, commanding the injured Earl of Warwick's troops, and John Mowbray, Duke of Norfolk, who had yet to arrive from Ferry Bridge. Most soldiers on both sides were archers, and the battle began with an exchange of arrows. The Yorkist Lord Falkenberg led his archers forward 40 paces, shot a volley, then retired to their original position. The Lancastrian archers returned volley after volley, but shooting into wind and driving snow could not see their arrows were falling short. The Yorkist tactics caused heavy casualties, forcing the Lancastrians to advance to close combat. The centre of the fighting is identified by a series of mass graves along the valley bottom where you are standing. No burials remain here. The bodies were exhumed in 1483 and reburied in sanctified ground by order of Richard III. The land here does dip. The field is four or five feet above me. So looking towards the tree with the road behind me, I believe the Lancastrians would have been on the left and the Yorkists would have been on the right. Follow the road up to the Old Cross. As an information board at this point, its title is Kings in Conflict. King Henry VI was descended from John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster fourth son of Edward III and came to the throne in 1421. Henry suffered a mental collapse after England's final defeat in the Hundred Years' War, and when he recovered in 1455, an alliance of nobles headed by his cousins Richard, Duke of York, had risen against him. Richard was descended from Lionel of Antwerp, Edward III's third son, and Edmund of Langley, Duke of York's fifth son. This gave York a strong claim to the crown, and in 1460 he forcefully pressed it, only to be killed at the Battle of Wakefield on the 30th of December. York was succeeded by his eldest son Edward, Earl of March, who was hailed as King Edward IV at Westminster Abbey on the 4th of March 1461. So now England had two kings. The Lancastrians had strong support in northern England, centred on York. On the 12th of March 1461, Edward's army marched up from London to confront them. The Yorkist vanguard under Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, reached Ferry Bridge, where the Great North Road crosses the River Air on the 28th of March, and found the Lancastrians had broken the bridge before the Yorkists could repair it. At 4am on the 29th of March, Palm Sunday, they were attacked by Lancastrian troops led by John Lord Clifford, Warwick's second in command. Lord Fitzwalter was killed. Warwick himself was injured and one source records that 3,000 of their men died. When Edward arrived with the main army, the Lancastrian defenders retreated. They were chased by Lord Falkenberg, Edward's uncle, whose mounted detachment crossed the air at Castleford and caught up with Clifford's force at Dingtondale near Saxton. The Lancastrians were wiped out, including Lord Clifford, who was killed by an arrow to the throat. Meanwhile, the Yorkists advanced to meet the main Lancastrian army on the fields between Taunton and Saxton. By late morning, both armies were deployed in the falling snow and poor visibility. The Yorkists are still missing Norfolk's contingent. I've left the road now and I'm walking along the short trail towards the village of Towton. I'm heading north and straight away ahead of me is the, the valley of the Cockbeck, the small river that runs from the outskirts of Leeds to its confluence with the River Wharf, just south of Tadcaster. Quite steep sided, open fields, hedgerows, clumps of trees and groups of woodland. There is another information board, and all these boards are provided by the Royal Armouries, Natural England and the Towton Battlefield Society. This one says, when the two armies engaged hand to hand, the Lancastrians' superior numbers pushed the Yorkist army back up the hill towards Saxton. 
The Orcus line may also have been outflanked at its left end. Some accounts report a Lancastrian ambush from Castle Hill Wood, far from the main action, although this may be an excuse given by the eventual victors for their temporary setback. The ten hours ascribed to the battle probably includes the battles at Fairbridge and Dintingdale. Another source describes the actual fighting at Towton as lasting only one hour. Then in time, Norfolk's troops arrived, the ones that had been delayed at Ferrybridge. This seems to have turned the tide, and as fresh troops joined the fighting, the left of the Yorkist battle line swung back. The tired and demoralised Lancastrian army broke and fled to the northwest, directly towards the Cockbeck, and a terrible fate in its freezing, fast flowing water. And I think those retreating troops were either hacked to death or left to drown. It's a lovely valley with steep sides and, and the small unassuming beck in the bottom but at times of flood I think it actually forms a, a small lake there are hedgerows and trees and small areas of woodland I'll continue now on the path towards the village of Towton quite bizarrely at this point is a, a burnt out Range Rover in a field There's a small lane with a hedgerow on the left and a, a wire fence on the right and the valley dropping down to the left and then along the stream and at the bottom is the tree-lined edge of the stream. This valley is quite dramatic and lovely countryside. I think this is the area known as the Bloody Meadow. It's been lovely walking today though, there's much more bird life than in recent times. I've heard lapwings and red kites, buzzards, I think I saw a couple of partridges. Edward Hall, a chronicler at the time of the battle, gives a death toll at Towton as 36,776, but a more commonly accepted figure recorded by heralds after the battle, is 28,000. Some scholars today think these are gross exaggerations and that the true figure may be closer to 3,000. However, the pursuit by the Yorkists, especially those of Norfolk's battle, who may have arrived on horseback, combined with the perils of crossing Cockbeck to cause carnage and give the name to Bloody Meadow, scene of much of the slaughter. Archaeological investigations of the battlefield suggest that pockets of Lancastrians made a series of stands during the retreat. To the north, scatters of artefacts on the high ground above Coxford suggest the final stages of the battle took place here. A last desperate effort to prevent the Yorkists from winning, marching on York and capturing King Henry. But all attempts failed. The Lancastrian cause was lost. This path is very pleasant. It follows the top of the southern bank of the valley towards Towton. Fields, hedgerows, woodland, trees covered with catkins. First of the blackthorn coming out, and one or two in the hedgerow with lovely pink blossom. Hard to believe on a day as cold as this that. Uh, Spring is just around the corner, but it is. It would be nice if the sun was out, but it only came out for about 10 minutes and then the clouds closed in and it's been grey and overcast ever since. I'm further along the trail now, almost at Towton. You can see the road to Tadcaster about half a mile to my right as an information board titled the bridge of bodies the only bridge over the cockbeck was here that would be down in the valley below me where the old london road crossed the stream on its way to tadcaster those lancastrians who made it over the bridge probably escaped the orcist pursuit but many more were probably slaughtered before they could cross 
The bridge of bodies where the dead Lancastrians filled the stream, allowing others to cross, may have been here. Henry VI, his wife, Queen Margaret, and their son, Prince Edward, were in York during the battle. Afterwards they fled into Scotland, while their surviving troops scattered across northern England and into Wales. Edward IV entered York and removed the heads of his father, Richard, and brother Edmund from Micklegate Bar, where they had been impaled after the Battle of Wakefield three months before. He replaced them with the heads of the Lancastrian lords slain at Towton, including that of Thomas Courtney, Earl of Devonshire. Edward's early reign was occupied by subduing Lancastrian rebellions in the north. He also quarrelled with Warwick the Kingmaker, who then tried to replace him, first with Edward's brother George, Duke of Clarence, then with Henry VI, who had been captured in 1465 and held in the Tower of London. Warwick and Clarence were defeated at Edgecote Moor in 1469 and at Barnet in 1471 where Warwick was killed. Soon after Queen Margaret, Prince Edward and the Duke of Somerset returned from exile in France to support Henry VI. Their army was defeated at Tewkesbury on the 4th of May 1471. Prince Edward was killed and Henry VI murdered in the Tower later that month. Edward IV's reign then continued peacefully until his death in 1483. His 12-year-old son briefly succeeded as Edward V. Then he, along with his brother Richard, Duke of York, the princes in the Tower, mysteriously disappeared from the Tower of London. The young king's uncle and protector Richard, Duke of Gloucester, took the throne as Richard III, while the Lancastrian claim descended to Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond. The Earl brought the Yorkists to the Battle of Bosworth, in 1485, where Richard III was killed, Tudor was crowned Henry VII, and the Wars of the Roses finally ended. I'm not sure that there's anything to add to that. What a duplicitous, conniving, murdering bunch of blackguards. The royal family seemed to have been back then. A clear view of Hadcaster now to the left, maybe only a mile or so away. Village of Towton's now in front of me, and I think I can see where the deck across is on, on top of the gradually rising ground to my to my right. I'm almost at the village. In 1996, a mass grave of battle dead was unearthed during building work at Towton Hall. Archaeologists recovered the remains of 38 individuals, all stripped before burial, and very carefully laid to use all the available space in the grave pit. Between 2002 and 2005, four more graves were discovered and archaeology excavated. Three were single burials, and the fourth grave contained three skeletons. Again, all showed evidence of having died in battle. Other excavations in the cellar and across the front lawn of Towton Hall found disarticulated human remains, suggesting that yet more skeletons have been disturbed during previous building work, probably in the 19th century. Excavations have also taken place across Chapel Hill behind the hall. These found no evidence of the chapel rebuilt by Richard III, although a few tantalising fragments of worked stone hint that the building, which was never finished and subsequently demolished in the late 16th century, may be located close by. If not spiritually, then my mind has certainly wandered back over the last 550 years while I've been walking through the fields and lanes at Towton Yathron. Back into the present day, quite forcibly, uh, as you have to walk through the village. A lovely village, but has that road running right through the middle of it. Now I've reached the end of the Wakefield Road here. Sign says 
Towton Battlefield, Aberford 5, Garforth 7, Wakefield 17, the B1217. I'm heading back towards the start of the battlefield walk and I can see the edge of the Cockbeck Valley across the fields to my right and I'm thinking of a point that they made on one of the videos that I watched that a lot of the troops wouldn't have been from this area and from here from the battlefield you can't see the valley or, or its steep sides or probably the fact that it was like a small lake at the bottom and you can imagine people running in terror and not knowing it was there until they went over that tree lined edge and would have had an awful decision to make to flee into the freezing cold waters or to turn and fight an army that's blood by them would have been no doubt boiling Visiting battlefields is not really something I've done. I did visit some World War I sites, once on holiday in Belgium and France, but not here in the built-up UK. And I don't really know how unique this battlefield is in England and the British Isles for being pretty much untouched. There is nothing really has changed since 1461 except for fences and roads and trees the actual land of the battlefield and the valley of the Cockbeck and the villages of Towton and Saxton uh, are untouched it's only in those villages where there has been some modern building all around the towns and industrial estates and motorways but this little corner is pretty much as it was I'm back at the lane that turns left and goes into Saxton that I walked up this morning. There's a bench on a, on a small sort of grassed area at the end of the lane. As the sign says, one and a quarter to Towton, four to Tadcaster, five to Garforth. So I'm just going to take a few minutes on this bench and have a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit. I've left the main road now and I'm heading back into Saxton. Interestingly, from the bench I was sitting on, in the distance, on the horizon, I could see uh, the Aberford Arms Houses with the woods of the Parlington Estate behind it. It's about five miles away and actually within the Leeds boundary. I could also, further along on the horizon, see a, a multi-storey block of flats in the Swarcliffe area of Leeds. The, the lone tree where I saw York Minster from is about a quarter of a mile to my left, just slightly higher. So in effect, from here, y you could see as far as York in one direction and Leeds in the other direction. But this has been a first for me. I've never been in a place before where I've been able to see the 20 miles between York and Leeds unobstructed like this other I guess than being in the plane anyhow I'm beginning to feel a little bit weary so I'm going to get my head down and listen to some music for the last half hour and if you've never listened to what I've got on my playlist today give them a try it's called Scala and the Calancy Brothers heard it last night for the first time it's a Belgian women's choir that I think won their choir of the year contest. Quite evocative music for this last part of the walk that has been thought provoking for me and a, and a, a hope of some interest to you, the listener. I've passed through Saxton once again, walked along the back of the church and the school and come to the little path that leads across the the fields brings me out in the car park of the crooked billet and back at my start. So this seems like a good place to end today's podcast. If you have enjoyed it, please tell other people about it. Consider subscribing. 
to the channel and if you can do join me next time but for now i'll say cheerio